221K in three days. That's that's the headline. We're a headlines world. <laughs> we read headlines more than anything else these days. But 821K in three days, their first million dollar month. And the funny thing is that it wasn't so long ago that one of these guys was like selling an Xbox just to, to start up his business. <laughs> Um, and I think one of them actually, his mom sold some jewelry as well to help him start his business. And the, the idea of doing $1.2 million in a weekend, like literally over a weekend, was probably, I know, a, probably a pipe dream at that point. Um, but we're super excited. We got something super special for today. Uh, we are going to be talking with uh, three just amazing Amazing men, amazing individuals, clients of ours, friends of ours, uh, people I've been known for a very, very long time. Um, just about something that that happened for them over the course of the last six to nine months. Just a, a dramatic shift that happened inside of their business. Something that Kate and I discovered about six or seven years ago and uh, partnered up and worked with these individuals, Landon Stewart, Chris Stapleton, Jaden Easton over at Clients and Community. And um, we're going to get into a little bit about this story because the headlines are one thing, but the story and what kind of played out here is another. So valuable. Yeah. So without any further ado, we're going to bring these guys in. Yeah. We're not going to, we're not going to play around here. So what's up? Yeah, thanks for having us out. What's up? How are you guys doing? Dude, good. Doing fantastic. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. We're doing good. So first of all, we love you guys. Um, we, we, we go know, back, you know, we go back. <laughs> we, we do go back. Go back. We go got, back. Yeah, we go back quite a ways. Um, but yeah, we're just super excited to have you guys here. Just talk a little bit more about your business, what you guys have done over the past, you know, really two years of building up your business. But what happened last year, um, partnering up together. And I guess to start things off, you know, we really connected about midpoint last year. Well, actually, we connected in January, February of last year. Um, but if maybe you can yeah. share a little bit about, you know, where you guys were at in your business, you know, mid last year. And uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, man. Thank, thank you again so much for having us out. You know, uh, some people watching, you guys might have seen some of our marketing and things like that. Uh, but we work with coaches on Facebook groups, right? And, uh, you know, we started our coaching business in January of 2019. And in about two years, we had grown this thing from zero to like three, four hundred thousand dollars a month, which, like you said, for us is like nuts, man. I mean, I do. I remember 2009. I'm 19. I want to attend my first event ever. And my mom did. She went and spawned off, you know, a gold necklace. So I could attend my first event ever to have the money to be able to do that. And no one in my life made six figures. Like, I didn't know anybody that had made six figures until I attended that event. And that was, you know, a decade ago now. And then, uh, you know, me, Sapes, and Jaden, we met five years ago. And we've been working together for a while. And then, uh, yeah, really created our first project together again in about 2019. Uh, we'd grown it to about four or 500,000 a month, which for us was a dream come true. But at the same time, at the same time, we had also begun to plateau around four to 500,000 a month. And some people look at it and they're like, well, it's not a bad thing to be stuck at half a million dollars a month. Uh, but to anyone who's kind of type A, you know, like us, stuck is stuck and it can be frustrating. I, I, you know, I remember cheering when we had our first $100,000 a month, we were crying on video. Literally, we had a first 100K a month and we cried on a live stream because we just couldn't believe it. We were so excited. And then you fast forward a year and once you've been doing it for a little while, uh, you kind of want to grow again. You know what I mean? Like you want to keep growing. And, and we believe that's one of the purposes of life is, is constant and, and ever growth. And we kind of gotten stuck around that four to $500,000 mark and kind of been there for about a little over 12 months. And we were of course doing things to, to break through the ceiling. You know what I mean? But business can kind of start to get a little complex once you start doing half a million a month, or at least it did for us. There was a lot of lessons we had to learn around leadership and all sorts of lessons that we had to learn. Uh, and then, you know, we found you guys, right? So we were doing four to 500,000 a month. We'd been there for 12 to 18 months, I believe. Saves or Jaden might have the, the exact, but around 12 to 18 months. Uh, and then we got connected with you guys. I know that, uh, that we'd worked on a small project together, you know, Andrew previously. And <laughs> I know that you guys were working with folks on events and things like that. And so we had that convo and decided to kind of do something and, you know, for a little context, you know, we had done events in the past, but they'd always been a big money loser for us, not a money maker for us. 
Uh, and so, you know, when we started working with you guys, but that's essentially where we were at. I don't want to, I'll let you guys lead the questions. I could just keep talking forever. So I'll let you guys lead the way. Uh, yeah. but, uh, that's it. That was the problem. Yeah. And you know, it's funny, like that, that stuck plateaued place. Everyone kind of hits it in, in that when you are a coach or an expert, you're a consultant, you have like a training type company, everyone's stuck place is different, right? So for you guys, it was the four or 500 K mark where it was like, all of a sudden there was a plateau. Other people we've talked to hit that at 50 K hit that at hundred yeah. K, right? You start to run into, you start to run into certain issues inside of a coaching and expert business where the, the fulfillment starts to, you know, catch up with you. And then how do you continue to bring on new clients to the film? And ultimately, you know, if you're listening to this and you've been in that place, whether it was at 40 K or 20 K or hundred K or 200 K, just comment below stuck. Yeah. Because I know we went through that in our own coaching business. Clearly mm -hmm. you guys did as well. And um, what we talked about, you know, is the idea of using virtual and or live events as a part of the business model. And so I guess hit mm -hmm. on that a little bit. You guys said you did um, a live event previously and it was more of a money loser for you than a money maker. What, what, do you, what happened there? The one thing I, I'll add, can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 The right. one thing I'll add into that is, uh, you know, we, we had a mentor, Mark Overson, you guys knew, and he was really good at hosting like these small little pocket events with clients and he never really pitched at events. Um, so me, Landon and Jaden, like we were kind of cut from that cloth of like providing great events for clients, but we never pitched at them. It was more of like fulfillment for, you know, our program. It was a way to bring people together, a way for us to help, you know, provide a higher impact for our clients, but we never sold at them. Mm -hmm. And I think we had a little nerves around it. I mean, it, it's a, it's a different idea. I think people coming into events, it's like you have kind of two types of events, no pitch events or event where you actually drive revenue. And we haven't really experimented with that um, before finding you guys. We've dabbled with it, we've tried it before, wasn't anything related to the kind of results we've created with you guys. But stepping into that, we knew that there was a lot of things, a lot of pieces of the puzzle to make a great event profitable. So we wanted to hire the best in the world. you know. And we found you guys, we knew you guys were really good at it. And uh, we didn't wanna go at it alone because there's a lot that goes to hosting profitable but high impact events that you guys helped. Um, and we've obviously found that out for ourselves, you know, hosting that first event, cracking 800 K mm -hmm. and uh, it was really special, but yeah, it was our first real go at it when it comes to pitching at our events and really providing that opportunity for clients to upgrade and, and uh, make that empowered decision for them for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And real quick too, I was just curious, going back to that stuck state, like what was what was kind of going on a little bit when you're in that place? Like I know for me, when we got stuck in our business, like it was man, it was it was some stress. Like I we were yeah. stressed, I was stressed out, like I had hard nights in terms of sleeping. Um it, just, it would be interesting because I think there's a lot of people that aspire to get where yeah. you guys were mid last year, right? Four to five hundred. But I think there's also that like you know, there's some stress involved in running that type the of business. The reality of stuck. what it's like, yeah. What were you guys feeling? How dark do you want to go here? <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, stress is yeah. threatened once, man. Go it was, it. especially when you're so growth driven. And I mean, so for us yeah. to, you know, looking at it, so we had a point. We grew from 20000 a month to 400000 a month in like six months, which was such a rush. I mean, yeah. literally like a rush, you know, like when you see every month growth, growth, gr the, the accolades cheering you on, like, it's like growth, growth, growth. And then you go from that. And then all of a sudden, you know, three months have passed, you sell the same revenue numbers, six months yeah. have passed, same revenue numbers, 12 months. And it's like, you know, have we lost our edge? Are we not going to be able to grow past this, you know? And it's crazy too. I mean, you start doing 40,000 a month, which, you know, at one point was like our absolute dream, but then you start doing it for a while and it's like, should we do something else? like, is this cap? Are we not going to be able to grow past this? Like, should we go find something else? Like you kind of have these like thoughts that start, that start creeping in when you've been stuck for a little while. And again, uh, we were, that wasn't the first time in our life that we were stuck. We were stuck at 20,000 a month at one point for 12 months too. And same kind of thing, you know, so it was the same kind of stressors that kind of appeared just because. We are, we're about growth. We want to see progress, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Jaden? What was it like for you? 
because I know, just so everybody knows, Jaden handles a lot of like the operational things. He's like the guy that like integrates it all and makes it work. He's the unicorn. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. but, not, but I know that that's a different level of pressure as well too, right? So what's it yeah. like? It's, I mean, stuck is stuck. I mean, stuck is also not really stuck if you project into the future. I mean, in my opinion, stuck is, is also moving, moving backwards just in the sense that like as you run a business, uh, you you have a team. Your your team wants to make more money as a business. Like you, you want you want to innovate and, and try new projects. So it was it was a stressful time for us uh, to be there. I can speak uh, per- personally on that in terms of like it's a little bit hard to fall asleep. It's a little bit hard to get motivated about your business when you have been stuck uh, for for months. And there there's a lot of opportunities and things we also want to do for our team members that just wasn't possible uh, being stuck. Um, so. It, it was a point at, at which there was there was a lot of conversations on what should we do, just as Landon said, um, and re- really thankful that uh, it ended up coming down to uh, working with you, having you guys enter our lives, and uh, mm-hmm. being able to move towards uh, creating a live event model. The one, yeah. the one thing that I'll add, uh, guys, and that was a great share, Jaden, is, and you reminded me of it. It's like when you're stuck. It's not like we were sitting around twiddling our thumbs all day, like. Oh, we're good. Like we were trying different ads, different hooks, different bonuses, different funnels, different offers. Like we were trying a lot of things, but after a while, when you kind of hit the wall over and over and over again, you kind of got to reinvent sometimes. Mm. And sometimes that reinvention can be scary. And just like Landon said, when the doubt starts to creep in, right. And you're alone and nobody's around and you're kind of done for the day. And you're sitting there by yourself thinking like the doubt, that doubtful voice can start creeping in. Like, am I in the right model? (laughs) Like, am I in the right business? Like all these weird ideas start kind of bubbling up as an entrepreneur. Um, And that you don't want to stay there too long. You know, me, Landon and Jaden, we've been in business for years together. We've gone through a lot of ups and downs. Um, Really, some stories we'll tell you at some other times. Right. But we've gone through a lot. And uh, I think, you know, we gave ourselves permission to kind of reinvent ourselves and we just never gave up. We stayed, we stayed, you know, we kept the vision alive. We stayed, took care of ourselves as much as possible too. This is one big piece. It wasn't like our health was starting to deteriorate a little bit during those stressful times, but we hired Mm -hmm. coaches, we hired personal coaches, like performance coaches that we spoke to on a regular basis, which kind of led us down the path of like pulling ourselves out and eventually working with you guys to, uh, to launch our event model. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Like I said, everybody faces a different plateau at a different place. And I know for me, like when we reached ours, like I found myself in like a deep pit mm-hmm. and, and it, and I actually did a poorer job than you guys did at managing the stress. And I wish I had some of the coaches you guys had back then about six or seven years ago. Yeah. Um, I remember it being like, is this really just luck? Is this meant to be long term, or is this like, oh, it only is like a twelve month to twenty four month thing, and then that's it? Like, yeah. is that what that's going to be like? And it's it's not a fun place to be in. But the part that I appreciate that you three did is you did pivot, like you said, Chris. Like you were like, all right, it's time to innovate. It's time to recreate. It's time to redesign. And for any of you that are watching that might be one of the most valuable tips for you. Like with where you're at, where you're at inside of your business, are you at a point where you might need to redesign some things? You might need to reevaluate where you're at in business, where you want to go, and what are the best vehicles to help you get Mm -hmm. to achieve what you want to achieve? Because it's like the worst thing in the world is like banging your head against a wall. And one of the most beneficial things that you can do, which these guys have done, is like take a step back and then redesign and take a step back because then it's like you catapult forward mm-hmm. and it's super, super powerful. Yeah. So we think about, you know, mid last year in that plateau, like you said, about 12 months of plateau. For some people, like you said, they'd be pumped to be at a plateau of four or 500. But for you guys, that was a place of stress, right? Yeah. So then fast forward 13 weeks, 13 weeks later, October, mid October, at the end of a weekend. Yeah. 821k done in three days. I was like, I gotta see their faces. Yeah. <laughs> first million, first million dollar month. It was like 1.2 and some change million that month. And it's obviously the revenue, and then it's the impact you had on your people too, which is just incredible. And the impact, uh, you know, we saw just in your internal team. 
So if you're watching this, you're like, okay, well, how the hell did they go from like this place of stuck for a while, for 12 months, some stress involved, some frustration involved to 13 weeks later, that type of outcome. And so that's where it's kind of been shared a little bit where you guys, we work together on implementing a strategy around live events and obviously what we got coming up next with virtual events. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people out there that are in the coaching and expert consulting space love the idea of doing an event, um, but it scares the crap out of them. And so maybe talk a little bit about where you guys were at, you know, previously doing an event. And then let's talk about like, okay, well, what transpired between, you know, your first event in April of last year to the one in October? Yeah. Yeah. Jane, you want to chat about some of the, the transformation dude around event logistics, dude? (laughs) Goodness. Yeah. So for our, our first event that we hosted, which we kind of teed up for our clients earlier that year, it was, it was a value only event. And like we locked down the venue a few months out, but like we hopped on meetings, I think it was like two or three weeks before that event. And we're just like, okay, so like, what are we going to do at this event? And that, that was kind of normal for us because we had come from like Mark Hoverson's world. I mean, that was really early for Mark. Mark would decide what the event was going to be about on the way to the event. And we <laughs> love Mark. And Mark was the only person in the world who could do that. That's right. Yeah. Oh, Chris, you're, you're muted if you're trying to add something in. Uh, there we go. And Jane, I'll let you continue here. But by locking down the event venue, um, what he means by that is us literally going into our movie theater at our apartment complex <laughs> and like blocking at venue uh, 86. Oh, at venue 86. Oh, OK. I was even talking about bef- one of our first events. Like if you guys want to know, like we invited people over to our apartments <laughs> and we literally blocked the door. So security didn't come in. We had 20 people in a little room. So anyway. <laughs> But go yeah, ahead, Jaden. <laughs> yeah. So, so we go from hosting that, which we, we started pl- like really planning it two to three weeks before. It was pretty stressful. It took away a lot of our focus from other parts of the business. Yeah. And it was great from a perspective that like we were able to get our clients together. They were able to develop deeper relationships amongst themselves to facilitate a great culture. Um, we were able to develop deep, deep relationships with our clients and, and, and with our team. Um, but by the end of it, we were like, that was a lot. And not only was it a lot, it, it took our execution power away for almost like a month. It basically yeah. lost us. It lost us my money ultimately. Well, it cost us money ultimately. Yeah. So when we were thinking about this next event that was that was coming up, we we were just we had a lot of like beliefs, I guess, that that were that almost held us back from even, even working with you guys. We just number one didn't see how valuable events could be for the economics of our business, how value, uh, how valuable events could be from a culture perspective, both amongst our clients and with our team. Um, mm-hmm. And we also overestimated um, how, how, how complicated it would be because uh, we didn't know what we, what we didn't know. Anything you guys yeah. want to layer on top of that? Yeah, I think we, uh, one of the things, and you touched on it there, is like we really underestimated the power it has on our clients when they make a really good decision in a live event setting, like the trajectory of what happens when they're making a decision to upgrade at an event. And then we'll see them at the next event. And that decision to anchor in um, is it's a powerful, it's a powerful thing for people. It's different than, you know, purchasing a program over the phone or just having an upgrade call on zoom. There's something powerful in person collectively as a room all making a decision to move forward yeah. um, and and we're noticing that it's impacting how they're executing in our program um they're anchoring into their decision and and we're noticing like the momentum that's even happening in our clientele yeah so there's something different that just there's an electricity in the air at live events that just can't be duplicated you know on zoom or digitally yeah. Yeah. And there's, you know, when you think about like from an economic standpoint, there the impact, the community, um, it all leads to your, your clients end up having more success inside your programs. But from an economic standpoint, what we've seen is, you know, when you have like a, you know, a five or 10 K high ticket offer that maybe you get 10 to 20 percent of those people to then ascend into that next offer, that mastermind or that 20 or 30 K offer that a lot of coaches and experts have. And you guys were seeing a similar type of result, right? Like somewhere in that 10 to 15 K range, I think maybe on the high end, you see like 20%. Yeah. But what events, what we found is something Kate and I found years and years ago was that 
There was no better way to make an impact on our clients and ascend them into our highest program. So what, ultimately is where we like everybody knows they'll have the most success as well too, right? right. It's yeah. super valuable to them. Yeah. So was, what did you what did you guys say? Yeah, I mean, uh, so one thing so I'm excited to have this combo. Events uh, for I want to I want to layer on uh, one of the a couple of things Steve Jay touched on then I'll talk a little bit of economics. But yeah, I mean, events in general are just so powerful for a business. You know what I mean? Like having the ability to meet your clients in person, you can really develop relationships that stick around for life. Like we've now had clients that have attended. We've hosted three events in the last 12 months. We're now hosting one every nine days. We've had clients that have attended all of those events. And like their personal transformations are insane when they attend events. And then when we see the transformation from event to event, which for us yeah. is just so appealing. Like obviously I'll talk economics in a second. That's important. Uh, but like it is so fulfilling to see clients transformation in real time. Like obviously online, you can see their posts, but when you see it in like real time in the face, it's yeah. like it's so huge and it's so fulfilling for us. You then have the staff, you know, now it's a great excuse. We get almost our entire staff coming to us every 90 days. You know, we're a virtual company. We don't see our staff. And now we get to actually hang out with our staff. You know, our staff. Um, has stuck Another great point. Some, like really hard times with us over the past 12 months. You know, you think a 400,000 a month business, depending on where you're at, you look at that and it's like, everything must be like perfect there, but you go through hard times. Uh, and, and at any business, at, at any level there, there's trials and tribulations. Right. And our staff has stuck by us. And a big part of it is the relationships that we're able to cultivate with them at in-person events. So there's a lot of intrinsic value. And now I'll talk economics. Uh, but I, I want everyone to see that, that there's so much yeah. intrinsic value in the staff, the clients. It's just yeah. huge. I highly recommend them. Uh, and then from the economic standpoint, I think the most important thing to understand, you know, in business is that a dollar isn't a dollar. You know what I mean? Like if you look at a business, right, on average, you're seeing anywhere from in a coaching model, you're seeing anywhere from a 20 to 30 percent profit margin, right? That's a solid profit margin inside of a coaching business model. That means that every dollar you make is really only worth about 20 to 30 cents. So a dollar isn't a dollar. A dollar is 20 cents. A dollar is 30 cents. At events, events are a model that's really injecting the business not just with $800,000, but it's like $800,000 with very little cost and overhead. Of course, there's some event costs and things like that, but the actual profit that that injects into the business. So it's worth more than a dollar of regular revenue. I hope I'm like explaining that correctly. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You have your regular revenue, which for us is 400000 a month. Each of those dollars are worth a percentage. Then you have the 800 grand that we made at the live event. And those dollars are actually worth more. So it's worth the equivalent in terms of profit of like three months of profit in the matter of like three days. Mm -hmm. So like economically, uh, it's re that's really hard to beat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think too, if you look at, you know, I think we're all faced in the coaching and expert space that advertising costs are probably not going down. Uh, at least on, on Facebook, right? They, they, yeah. they just continue to go up. So the game you have to win is your your value of your customers, like that lifetime yeah. value. And so what we found is that through events, there is no better way to impact that lifetime value. So for example, for you guys in October, what was the percentage of your clients that renewed into your highest end program? Yes. At the live event? Yep. At the live event. So I think we had 21 clients. And if any of our clients are watching, what's up? We love you guys. Uh, but we had 21 clients attending who are already a part of our high end mastermind, right? Our highest end program. We had 19 of them renew. Uh, so 19 of 21, which is really good. And then we had 21 clients in, uh, or no, 23 clients. We had 44 total. So 23 clients that were a part of our front end coaching program that ascended to our highest end back in mastermind, uh, which, and I think we had 23 there and I think 20 of them did it. So I think the total upgrade rate was like 41, uh, upgrade slash renewal rate was like 41 of 44, which was nuts, man. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It exceeded our expectations, let's just say that. Yeah. And yeah. so comparing that to upgrading 15% of people from the front end high ticket to your high end mastermind. Right. So right. that's, that's the, like an 80% increase on, uh, which I mean, when you're looking at, so yeah, again, in business, you have your lifetime client value, which is like one of the most important numbers in business, right? The higher, one of our, one of our mentors says, don't compete on marketing, compete on economics. You just want to have the highest lifetime value 
If you have the highest lifetime value, you can afford to pay the most per lead in your industry. And that person who can pay the most per lead can just generate all the leads in the industry. You know what I mean? And so having the ability to go from a 10% upgrade rate to a 20% upgrade rate is a massive difference in terms of revenues, a massive difference in terms of profit, right? So, yeah. The, the last thing I'll touch on economically too, which people might not be thinking about, but when you enroll somebody in a payment plan, there's a percent, certain percentage of those payment plans that they're going to default and not going to right. pay. So for us, we're collecting on average about 80 to 85% of the cash that was promised to us for payment plans, which is pretty good. But um, with the events, um, what, what I specifically noticed over the last like 90 to 120 days is that's actually creeping up to more like 90%. Mm-hmm. And then one of the reasons why is because now when clients are rolling in a program, they, they know they're going to attend an event. And to attend that event, what they have to do, they have to make their payment plan. And that's mm-hmm. work, That's all both on the front end, but also on, on the back end as well. So economically, we've also noticed an increase on, on the overall cash collected um, as a whole from payment plans, which, which really helps. That's so awesome. Um, so, I had one. Oh, one please go ahead. No, because yes. I was just thinking about this year for you guys. And I know the coolest part of watching what you've all done, because we really started like working on the event process in what, like August? I think it was right around August. And it was like, and then October creeps up out of nowhere. But now it's like when I look at what you guys are doing this year, and I know what you're going to be doing beyond, it's like, like you said, Landon, you've got four live events that come up every quarter. You're implementing virtual events now too, because those are so powerful as well. So it's like, what are you guys most excited about with just thinking about where you were at last year? And I can just like see it in your energy. It's like different. You guys are like pumped, excited for the year. Like I would love to hear from like the three of you of like what what what's got you most excited for the future of what's going to be happening for you guys? Yeah, you know, I think what's exciting for us in a lot of ways is just we're building our business on just such sturdy foundation uh, Mm. with the event. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, you know, and and again, I mean, we were doing okay before, but it was a little bit more, there's a little bit more sand in the foundation. And now it's a little bit more concrete in that foundation, you know, to where now we have the quarterly events, which can erase a bad quarter, by the way. Because I mean, if you look at, you look at the quarter we had right before the 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 event last year. It wasn't one of our better quarters. You know what I mean? And now yeah. all of a sudden the event, you know, the next quarter is like now it turns. So it can take a, a quarter that wouldn't have been that good and it can like save you in a bad quarter. And then it can make a good quarter like great, like a good quarter, a record breaking quarter. And it can save a bad one, which is really, really valuable because now we know there's a little bit less pressure each day. You know, because I mean, when you're running a business that's 400000 a month, there's a lot of pressure. Like we have, that means that we have to produce at $12,000 to $13,000 to $14,000 every day. So when you look at the account, it's like we did $2,000 a day, not $14,000 a day. The next thing you have to do 26. So it like, you see what I'm saying? Like there's some (laughs) stress that's $400,000 a month, right? Whereas, so, and, and that pressure can really creep in, you know what I mean? So when you have the events, it's like, Hey, it's okay if this, obviously we're, we're doing everything we can to have good months. You know, we want to have good months. We have good days, good weeks, all of that. There's a little bit less pressure to ensure that it happens, knowing that even if the quarter doesn't go perfect, we've got the event coming up and that's mm-hmm. going to be, you know, a cash injection. Um, yeah. 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 And I think, I think oh, go ahead. Go ahead just as uh, I think doubling down on that as entrepreneurs, and we could probably all agree on this call, but I think the number one thing we want in our business is predictability. Mm-hmm. The ability to predict revenue, to predict these quarterly events, to predict the virtual events and know that we can lean on those um, and they're going to keep us steady and on pace with our targets. So yeah. it, it has allowed us to kind of let the stress a little melt off the face a little bit, allow us to kind of relax into our, our, our model here, mm-hmm. as well as continuing you know, our standard procedures, right? Driving ads building the Facebook group, helping people in the coaching business, but really leaning into the event model as that pillar of predictability and knowing that even if we flop at the event, right? And I know we, we set targets and we usually exceed those targets, but a flop is considered great, profitable, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, it really has allowed us to kind of take a deep breath and just look into the future as like, 2022 is going to be a hell of a year. Yeah. And I think we all feel it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and maybe we, maybe we'll have another conversation in a couple of weeks. We've got the virtual event coming up. How many we people do. 
registered? How many people registered for that right now? How many we got, Landon? 2,000 or just shy of 2,000. So, Woo! yeah, so for content, I'll, I'll tee it up for everyone. So we did, we started doing quarterly live events in person with clients uh, with your guys' help. And now we, you guys are helping us run uh, virtual events that's essentially a lead generator and a way to acquire front-end clients. And we're hosting our very first one here at the end of February. We've been promoting it for about two weeks. We've got like 1,950 registered for it right now. We'll probably have about 3,000 people registered for that. Uh, and that's going to be fun too. Yeah. yeah. So one last question, and we we'll don't want to keep you guys much longer, is what were, like, when we started working together, obviously there was how you felt about events before. We know how you feel now. Like, what were some of the things that, you feel like we're either landmines we help you avoid or things that really help impact why this is such a big part of your business moving forward. Jaden? Yeah. <laughs> You're up, bro. Awesome. You, you, like, you know, Jaden planned the first one alone. And so he he's the one that really sees a lot of how valuable it was to have you guys help us plan that last one. Sure. Yeah, I would say like from a scheduling perspective, you guys helped us bring like a lot more intentionality, intentionality to like number one, what's going to make a really engaging and impactful event. Um, but number two, like what has to happen from a schedule perspective at the same time to foster people to ha have them believe enough to be able to like upgrade to uh, upgrade to the back end and, and to make a purchase. So that was really big. And then also from a event logistics uh, perspective and utilizing our team, understanding like what roles we needed to make happen, maybe what roles we need to bring in, what we needed to outsource. Um, you really helped us see um, things that uh, if we didn't have you guys would have ended up being like pretty big mistakes in the moment that would have had to result in pretty big pivots. And we're able to instead uh, th think about those and, and cover those in the planning process instead of having to actually make those mistakes. I think like in life, right? You can either uh, learn from your own mistakes, but uh, you can also supercharge. You can learn from the mistakes of others. And you two are like one of the most experienced uh, in, the, in the event space. So we were, uh, we felt really blessed to be able to learn from you guys. Um, you took what was originally a very daunting task, especially for me, like operationally, and with some of the templates, some of the templates you guys gave us, some of the SOPs, and just just with with your knowledge, um, you helped me sleep better at night, <laughs> and, uh, and and clearly uh, it, it worked because we did 829k at the October event, uh, and we've been hosting profitable events since. And there's uh, there's other components to that too. I don't know, Chris, do you want to touch on the value? Yeah. Even for like having them actually there at the event because yeah. that, that was a whole other. There's two big pieces of it. And Jaden covered right like the pre-event, right? The preconditions of preparing for the event. And then there's actual the execution of the event. And there's a lot of variables when you bring, you know, 100, 200 people into a room, right? Everything there's some things that happen. For, yeah, everything you plan what? for, it's not what's going to occur. You know, you're, gonna, you're stepping into a different reality than the one you had planned for. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I was thinking about it before this call and like hosting a live event is very similar to like building a house, right? You've got the plans in place. You've got the blueprints ready to go. And then when you build, when you actually go to build the house, 100% without a doubt, there's going to be audibles along the way. There's going to be little tweaks to the process. The, some measurements need to be adjusted. And what we noticed with you guys at this event is you're constantly focused on two things. Pulling, you, you know, you're constantly focused on two things at the event, high impact for the clients, high profitability for the business. Mm -hmm. And all of your decisions, I felt were leaning on those two things where you're pulling us aside after certain talks, you're auditing the room, you're looking at how the event's going and you're seeing a lot of the things you're reading in between the lines. That's what you guys are really good at. You're able to see things that from us, we could just focus as the owners of the company, just delivering great value, leaning into our responsibilities, and it takes a lot of the pressure off the logistics when everything's happening and you're in the weeds of the event. We just know you're going to pull us aside when needed and say, hey, we're noticing a few things. Let's do this during the next break. Let's do this intro verse for the next talk. Here's why. And you're constantly looking on how to really enhance the whole experience, not only for us profitability wise, but for the clients as well. You don't ever forget about the impact of the clients. And uh, for me, that's just been a really cool thing to watch you guys um, because if you're not an event coordinator, right? Like you guys specialize in this, you're experts at this. You don't really know what to see. We have a lot of blind spots um, when you're hosting your first two to three events or your first four or five events. You're always learning every time, but you guys did a fantastic job of reeling everything in, making sure all the ducks are in row. And uh, we really appreciate it. You know, yeah. helped a lot.
Yeah, you got it. And I think uh, there's obviously like the coordination, the planning, the logistics, the operations, which Jaden, we worked a ton on that together. Um, and then there's, you know, getting the ticket sales, getting people to show up. But I think yeah. one of the things that's interesting that a lot of people take for granted, I know Kate and I did, we hosted our first event with zero coaching and it was a huge mistake. But Landon, I know you're a bit, you're big into marketing, persuasion, influence. What did you think just about how like an event and we call it the three day sales letter, like an event, you know, you think about like a VSL or writing a sales letter or doing a sales call, there's a process. Mm-hmm. And so if you can speak to a little bit about what you got away from, okay, an event is a process. There's a science to it. Oh, no, muted. Muted, Landon. That was probably really good stuff, but we need to <laughs> say it again. There we go. Yeah. One, the, the first thing I'll start with is, yeah, I mean, literally every single piece of the event is like, has insane psychology that's baked into it. Like every every little piece of the event, you know what I mean? Uh, from the fact that, you know, little things, like let's make sure that we cater lunch. Because, you know, when you feed people, there's reciprocity. That's like, that's, so there's like little tiny things. And, and I mean, that's just like a little micro example, uh, but there's all these little things that are baked in. And you guys obviously helped us plan the slides for my actual pitch on stage. Uh, which was really good, I think. Um, but it was with your guys' help. It was with your guys' help, you know? So much that goes into it. And there's just, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm having trouble thinking of specific examples, but there's so much psychology that's baked into the entire event from the second people, from even just the second that you sell the first ticket leading right. up to the event to get a ticket. I mean, there's a lot of things that come to events that you might not think of, right? Like, it's one thing to sell a ticket to an event. It's another thing to get people to show up. And there's a lot of psychology that goes through the process of just getting someone to attend a live event. There's a lot of process too that's involved in like, and I think Steve's already touched on it, but I think that, you know, a lot of people, when they do events where they sell at the events, everyone can feel that the event is about sales. Whereas I think one of the things that made you guys really, really good and why we really liked working with you guys, why our clients also love the events is that they're really designed to have amazing high impact on the clients. And that's first and foremost, because obviously at the end of the day, uh, all of our success really comes down to our clients having a great experience at the event. So you guys, re- and Safe touch on it, but you guys really have that at like the forefront. So let's make this an amazing transformational experience for the client. And so even though at the event, you know, there are selling sequences that take place and there's a funnel that takes place, uh, even people who don't purchase anything at the live events, uh, they find it to be an absolute win that they attend and they found it to be yeah. absolutely transformational. And I think that, and for us, we really, really value that because we obviously love to sell, but at the same time, we also want to be well liked. We want to be well respected. We want our clients uh, to get results with what we teach. That's incredibly important to us, and we see that as you know, the longevity of our business is really comes down to the results that our clients get. And I think that is, and it's a balance of that. You know what I mean? I think that some people can go a little overboard on the selling side. Not yeah. that you don't want to, you know, go hard, and we go hard, but. If you go too overboard there, you can kind of come across the wrong way and it can kind of leave, it can have the opposite effect of what you want at the event if you do it wrong. Yep. Yeah. So I guess the last thing I'd ask you guys, if these people listening or watching this, whether it's live or in a replay, they're, they're a coach or an expert, they have a training company and they're thinking about doing either live or virtual events, leave them with your last thought. Like, what would you say to that person? Hire these guys. We have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, besides that. It's a. Uh... Legit though, we spent Jaden not have the exact. I think two hundred and fifty grand on coaching. Uh, so so like we've we've made that. You guys weren't our first investment. You know what I mean? Right, right. Uh, you guys were not our first investment. First investment on on helping us with events. Uh, but we spent two hundred and fifty grand on coaching. You guys are the best. Period. That we've worked with in, and I mean, and I mean that in any space, any investment that we have made, and we've had a lot of good coaches, and I, nothing against those people, but you guys are the Bet. Every time we hop on a call, we have massive takeaways that we immediately implement. We're never confused. We're never lost. We understand the what's and the why's. We're able to easily implement it. Um, it's not regurgitated bullshit, the stuff that you teach us. It's like real stuff that you can tell you actually know what you're doing. Because again, we've hired a lot of coaches and sometimes like I, uh, I could have learned this from like another book. Like I read like half this from like this other book or this other coach. Like you can tell that you guys have ran a lot of events and you guys know it at like a deep level and that rubs off on all of your guys' teaching. So that's right. That's kind of the first yeah. time we've heard it to that level. So thank you, man. That means yeah. a lot coming from you. Appreciate it. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, you know, and CNC and me, Jaden and Landon, I think all great entrepreneurs that we like to, to, we look up to, right. Great businesses, great brands. They're looking at how to get a competitive edge, right. In the marketplace. They're constantly looking as how can we stand out? How can we be a little different? How can we provide higher impact, higher touch points and live events? It's a no brainer. I mean, as far as a competitive edge, right? And especially in the coaching space. I mean, there's two types of coaching businesses, ones that host events and ones that don't. <laughs> and, and ones that literally just kind of, they do everything digitally, which is fine. Um, but we're noticing an uptick in client results, client success. Uh, we're noticing that we're able to stand apart. We're able to like kind of um, wash away a little bit of the pedestal energy in the coaching space and meet people in person, look at them, shake their hands in person, you know, they can look in the white of our eyes and like, we can tell them we believe in you. And that's just something that their com our competitors can't do unless they're hosting live events. So I think for us, it's a no brainer as far as, as that that's concerned. Um, I think it helps us stand out. It's higher profitability, higher impact for the clients. And they're just a lot of fun. It's really cool. And Landon touched on it. Bringing our team together is another element of the live events. We're able to see our team every 90 days too. Um, so that's what I would say. Get the competitive edge in the market. Um, stack a live event on top of one of your offers. And I think it'll bring it to life. I think it adds a lot of color and a lot of energy to your offers. Yeah. Dude, I love that. It's something that I wish we, we did sooner. Work with you guys. I look at a couple of events that we hosted. Um, and think about like the hundreds of thousands of dollars last year that we didn't process because we didn't do events sooner. So mm -hmm. like, like with us, uh, we, we kept on pushing it off, pushing it off, pushing it off. Um, and yeah, yeah, I just wish we got started a whole lot sooner because for all the reasons the guys brought up, I, like the, the, the three things I'll layer in quick is like the team. So like our internal team, we're a virtual company. A lot of people on here are, are virtual companies. It has just done so much for our team morale, our team culture. People on our team are stepping up as leaders, starting yeah. to grow because I'm someone to look forward to every, every quarter. And, and you really can't put a price on that. Uh, like number two, the, the culture, the community, the relationships that, that we have with our clients, but also the clients have amongst themselves and what that does in terms of impact, what it does in terms of wanting to stick in your programs. And then three, just the overall economics of the business and how much these events have now increased our lifetime value. And ultimately, the person who can pay the most to acquire the lead, pay, uh, pay to acquire the client wins. Um, and that gives us, just as Chris said, a really good competitive advantage. And those are three things that are possible with events and, and three things that are possible when uh people work with with you guys Goodness, man this yeah. was this was a good call man yeah, you guys, I, yeah. Anyone can like hear our passion that we have for for events i mean we just we freaking love it the one thing that Jaden said i just want to highlight one more time is like the what it's doing for our team culture is like a byproduct of hosting events that we it kind of crept up on us like we didn't know the camaraderie and the, the bond and the culture that can get created by having events it's we're doing the team dinners before the event we're doing the exercises and the huddles and like we had to have our team here to execute the event but the byproduct of having them here and the impact it's having on our culture is is really going a long way so it's like the third pillar to events is the the team bonding the culture and being able to bring people together in your team too and i love what Jaden said there so i just wanted to highlight that yeah. yeah, it's huge. Well, you guys are great. We've uh, obviously we've kept you on here a little longer than planned. So thank you for hanging with us. You guys are awesome. Um, we've learned a ton from you guys. We're clients of yours. Yes. Um, you're clients of ours. So uh, we love you guys and you guys, how much you care about your people. It shines through and everything you guys do. Tons of respect for you guys. Really appreciate you yeah. doing this. And um, we're excited for the next year working together. Yes. You know, obviously the four events yeah. will years so well, yeah we got three more three more live events to do together this year and then we got the the virtual event coming up soon which is gonna be a lot of fun yeah and i just checked for 1952 registered for the virtual events as well Ooh. you know at front break 2000 tomorrow so yeah, exactly. 2000, 2000 yeah. plus registrants. you might get the 2500 registrants for that virtual event so that's going to be epic we'll have to we'll have another conversation after that event for yeah. Sure. yeah we'll do a little update call yeah. All right. Well, appreciate you three. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all. So if you are sitting here still hanging out watching this with us um, and you're interested, you're an expert, you're a coach, you have a training company, you're a consultant, and you're considering 
whether it's you've done events before or you want to do events, live events, virtual events, and you're interested in potentially us supporting you and just talking about what that might look like, you can comment below three day and uh, someone on our team will reach out to you or you can actually click on the link right inside this post three day sales letter.com forward slash book call. If you want to just go right to book and a call with us, you can do that there. Three, the number three day sales letter.com forward slash book call or comment below in this, uh, in this stream, in this live uh, three day and somebody on our team will get back in touch with you. And that's why I now I just appreciate, obviously love the guys over at clients and community. And like Andrew said, like, I think, you know, it's pretty clear that you heard the transformation that's happening for them. Um, and if you're curious, if that's kind of like where you're at, or even like Jaden said, you're not sure if you're a hundred percent there just yet, we've been in your shoes before too. And you can actually implement this sooner than you think. Yeah. And obviously these guys had themselves at a place where their business was doing about $400,000 a month. You might be like, well, I'm not there yet. Kate and I did our first event when we were only doing about twenty to thirty thousand dollars a month, if you have a six-figure or multiple six-figure coaching business, you are definitely in a place where you can start to consider adding in live and virtual events to your business and your business model. Yep. There is no better way to actually ascend your clients, acquire more clients, and make an incredible impact on your clients. But there is a science to it. There is a science to it. There is a strategy to it that I know me and Kate butchered our first time around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but over the years, we've actually spent over $2.4 million ourselves mastering this strategy through advertising, through doing events, through attending events, through consulting on events, through having mentors of our own. And uh, this is what we focus on. And this is 100% what we do for our clients. So if you're interested, again, in running live events or running virtual events, and you've done it before and you potentially want our help or you want to try it for the first time, comment below three day and someone on our team will reach out to you or click on the link inside of this post, three day sales letter.com forward slash book a call. And uh, we're looking forward to connecting with you. Bye, Take it everybody. easy, everybody.